Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio today here on behalf of my creative year. And the theme for this month is the word fun. So I got this idea from watching one of Gina B. Aaron's videos that's we're doing something similar but yet not the same. I know that sounds odd. Okay, so I was unpacking some boxes and I need to wrangle my painty paper situation. I've got it in three or four different boxes and it's just out of control and I need to get some kind of authority over my stuff. So as I was unpacking some boxes today looking for file folders, I found these old ones from when I was a personal chef and decided that I want to repurpose these because I need to... Oh, they're my folders from culinary school. Anyway, so I want to repurpose these. I keep all my scrapbook paper bits in these ticket holders, like what a mechanic puts your... Um, your paperwork in, it goes to work on your car so your paperwork doesn't get greasy. Well, that's what I ordered off of Amazon. So what I did was I took my label maker and I put on there what color they are. Of course, you can see through them so you already know this is pink paper. And here's the blue one and so on and so forth. So I have these in a magazine holder according to Roy G. Biv. And I decided that I have a rolling um, file cart basket from I think it's I got it from the container store so I wanted to try to do something with these folders and these leftover papers so here's what I've done I was thinking that would be fun to do these so I took the leftover scraps in the folder so I can use some of it up I don't want to use my good paper I want to use something that's bits and pieces so I've done the um, liquid Tex max um, matte gel over it as a glue because I'm running out of regular glue, so I decided to use this. I think that's what Gina did on hers, too. So I took these and I glued them on. It's still a little damp. When it dries off, I will go around with scissors and trim it off so it's fine. Then I'll put a label on here and put the word purple, like, you know, I don't already see it, but it's gonna be sticking up out of a hanging folder. So I thought maybe I should take a pretty purple paper and just put it across so I don't have to write anything. Then I did the green ones and they're really really damp so I'm gonna let these guys dry overnight and I'm gonna finish the rest of these and I will be back when um, I finish gluing all the bits together and try to think about how to keep the paper in the folder I thought about using staples but I really hate staples so I'm thinking maybe I might do some double-sided tape along the edges here so at least it's like a pocket and I can keep the paper wrangled in there. I'm gonna put eight and a half by 11 in here and see how well it does. Um, and then any bits that are little from the painty paper, what I will do is I will put those in a Ziploc bag and still put those inside here. Now this, these folders will be strictly for painty paper. This already has a system that works perfectly fine, but I use more painty paper and I don't wanna mix the painty paper with the um, scrapbook scraps. So these will be strictly painty paper folders that will go in a hanging file folder that will be able to be rolled right next to me when I need it and put away when I don't. Okay, so I'll be back in a little while. Might take me a couple days because these guys are still really wet and it takes a little bit to pull all these pieces apart and get them on there. So I'll be back. Okay, so it didn't take me as long as I thought it would, and the folders feel cool to the touch, which means they aren't completely dry. So here's the ones that I did. Um, at first, I started ripping the corners so there'd be no corners and all that jazz, and finally I gave up, and I was like, oh, look, I'm just going to glue this on there and be done with it. So that's what I did. So I've red, orange, yellow, which is more damp than any of them, green, blue, purple, or violet, or lavender, whatever you want to call it, pinks, and then brown. I'm going to do some more folders la later, I think, for digi prints, 
my original drawings and then prints of those drawings maybe to end up putting in uh, putting somewhere or sending them to friends whatever so here are all of the folders that I've done so far so what's left to do is to put some kind of tab colored tab up here so I have some leftover cardstock and I want it to be sturdy because you know I'll be grabbing it by this a lot I think so I want to give it a fighting chance and I'm going to use cardstock up here so I think that's all I'm going to do is just this section right here I don't care about this part you know so I'm just going to do this top part here and then I will put them in my um, rolling file cabinet and fill it up with paper so I'll be back in a second okay so I went through my cardstock and I picked out basic colors that will go with the folders so this is the pink one um, I cut them very randomly well kind of in a rectangle I can handle and I'm just gonna stick some wet glue and I'm using wet glue I don't want to use any of the Elmer's Extreme because I want this to stay for a long time. I'm not really sure that stuff stays all the time. And I'm going to glue it to where I have to cut around it. So later when it dries, you know, I'll just trim up the edges. But I wanted it to look like this. Whoops, like that. I don't really care about anything about this top part. I'm not going to do anything about that. At least not yet. I haven't got that crazy yet. But I think it's coming. <laughs> Here's the red and so on and so forth. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue these on. And then I'm going to trim them up. And then I will show you how they're going to go into the cart that I have for the prints. I might, co might come back and do the digi folder and do a, um, pull this down a little bit. And also do one for my mandalas and that kind of stuff. We'll see how it goes. But I'm just tired of not being able to find stuff. So, of course, I did it in the anal retentive Roy G. Biv order. Because, <laughs> uh, honestly, it seems a bit silly. But it is easier to find stuff when you're really organized. I don't mind my desk being a mess. As long as I know where things go at the end of the day or where to find them. When I start in the morning, I cleared my desk off yesterday from a week's worth of frenzy of working on a um, art journal. And I'm happy I left it out, but I'm also happy that I was able to clean it up. I knew exactly where everything went. And once I cleaned it up, I was able to start something else. I think that's part of a lot of people's problem is they don't clean up after themselves and they don't have any order. And no, you don't have to buy anything new. These Some of these folders are from... When I went to culinary school back, started in 1995. Um, actually, not 1995. These are from 2008. These were my uh, curricula folders for my students in culinary school. So, there you go. I'm just going to keep gluing. And then I'll be back with the rest of it in a few minutes. Okay, so I said I would come back and show you more folders that I made. And let me start with this one. I made this one for my book text or my book pages. A lot of people send me random pages from books like foreign books and stuff. And I've had them in three different places and I've decided that they all need to go in one place. So this one I just tore up, I don't know, some kind of, I think it was a Nora Robert, Roberts novel or something. And I just tore up some of the pages and then glued them here. And then I just wrote book text on the top. I used double-sided tape to tape these together because most of the book text that I use is not, you know, it doesn't exceed this. So it, so I put them either upside down, I mean right side up or sideways, whatever way they'll fit in. And that's fine. And it is kind of fat. It is bulgy because there's more in there than I anticipated. I didn't realize I had so many text pages spread out all over the craft room. So Here's what I've found so far. I'm sure I'm going to find more. This one is for my mandalas. These are mandalas that I made uh, just watching TV. I cut them out and pasted them on here. I have two or three that are, are they in here that are color, but I didn't want this to be color. I wanted it to be all black and white. The problem with doing it is I forgot 
that when you put medium on some of these pens, they run. And so uh, some of them are smeared a little bit. And then the gel medium in between them is kind of a icky grayish, blackish color. Um, but I wrote, I put myself a piece of white paper up there and wrote mandalas. And what I'm going to do is the rest of the ones that I plan on putting on here, I won't do in the pens that smear because now I realize that I'm going to put them on. I, you know, I'm going to put them on here. So I just picked out random ones that I'd done in black and white and then glued them, cut them out and glued them on here. And I did not fasten the sides because I found out since the last time I filmed, if you put an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper in here, it pretty much goes to the edge. So I don't want to staple anything or tape anything because then the paper won't fit down in here because I usually do my drawings on eight and a half by 11 paper. This one is because, this one says Gina B. Aaron's on it. And the reason why is being on her design team, I took some of her digital printouts and I cut them apart and then collaged them onto the front. I love the way it looks, and I'm not a person who's really well-versed in what colors go well together and that kind of stuff, but I don't care, because I really like this. And looking on camera, I see there's a couple of spots. I could put a few more of the yellow ones. So I put all her, the stuff that I did with her stencils on paper, um, anything that I made with her designs, her digi prints, or anything like that, Paper-wise, is going in here, and the rubber stamps and stuff are somewhere else. But I knew that I could put the papers in here. And the last one that I did was deli paper. I seem to have an accumulation, and I think these pieces of deli paper were sent to me by Cindy Utter because I told her I didn't have, like, a lot of deli paper. So she sent me all this lovely deli paper, and I, I did use double-sided tape on here because most of the deli paper will just slide right in and out of here. I can fold it up, it's no big deal. Um, so I wrote the word deli on here, but I haven't decided what to put on here. I have deli um, painty papers, but I've got to find some of them. See, again, my stuff is scattered in two or three places. I don't know where it is. So that's why I'm trying to minimize where some of this stuff is. All right, so that's four new folders that I made since the other day when I filmed. I've managed to put paper inside the folders that I already have. And let me um, turn this off, and then I'll come right back, and I will unscrew the camera from the post, and then I'll show you the, um, the way that I'm storing all these. As promised, I've come back to show you how I store things. And this is my rolling hanging file... I don't know if you want to call it a basket or whatever. Um, it's on wheels, and I think I bought it from the container store, and I've had it quite a long time. All right, so the very bottom is a large basket that will slide in and out. It's kind of hard to slide it in and out when the thing's on wheels. Then this one is a smaller size basket, and then there's the hanging portion. Now, when I bought it, it, it was meant to be just a rolling holder of baskets you could there's two empty slots here this one and the one down below where you could put two skinny baskets or one of those fat baskets up here in the top but I opted to buy the conversion kit to make it a hanging file um, cabinet of sorts oops sorry of sorts and this is what I ended up with so I had a bunch of hanging file folders that I found when I was sorting stuff and I put the ones that I did with the color fronts on them in here. Each of them has their own little file folders, um, hanging folder, and then the folders inside there. And then here is brown, which has coffee dyed, tea dyed paper in it. And I've got a few empty ones here. Then this is Gina's. This is the mandala folder. This is the book text which obviously I need to work on because that's way fat. And then this is for my deli paper. And then I still have tons and tons of room to grow. Um, if you don't have access or the income to buy one of these baskets, if you go to places like um, Office Depot, Staples, Target, where did I buy this? Well, I think I bought one at Target. It's a metal basket that has a mesh metal basket that's a cube. 
and it has the little runners on the side sort of like this does and you can do your hanging file folders in there of course you won't have as much room as I have in this one but it's a start if you have a small budget it's a good place to start um, also before I went to do this I used to keep my stuff in the magazine holders in, in the folders and magazine holders because that was inexpensive and easy so there's lots of ways that you can change the way you store things to see if you like it and not really spend a whole lot of money. I always save my uh, manila folders and either I use them for book covers or I actually use them for files. Uh, I don't throw them away. Like if I get tired of this stuff, I won't throw it away. I'll save it and use it for something else. I can always glue another um, thing on the front here and change the subject of what it is. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's inexpensive and it's easy. Okay, so that's what I do for fun or what I did for fun in the month of March for hashtag my creative year. So I will see you guys. I hope you try this. I hope you give it a try. It is so much fun to use things that you already have to convert them into things that you don't really have to spend money on. You can personalize them and customize them to your needs. So I hope you give it a try and I will see all of you in the month of April. Bye-bye.